Mr. Clinton, would you like to make a comment to Danny Williams? Hey, I don't want to hear any of that. Knock it off. Can we get any this comment about no, anything like that, on, please? Stop. Okay, this is a monumental event for us. We don't want to hear it. Well, I know, but we got a lot of questions that are not being answered from the American people. I have no doubt that I am Bill Clinton's son. It was common knowledge. Everyone in Arkansas knew. Everywhere I went, they pointed, that's Bill Clinton's son right there. He looked like him, don't he? The ears, the mouth, the chin, the teeth, the eyes, the nose. I see him in me. You can see a black Bill Clinton. When I brush my hair, I, I can see Bill Clinton with waves in his head. <laughs> I always felt bad about him not wanting to be in my life. Was it because I was black? Was it something wrong with me? Why he don't want to be in a part of me. It made me think of even sometimes suicide. It's not fair, and it has been hurtful. And he still refused to acknowledge me. Well, time was very hard, and my mom was a working girl on the streets. She was heavy on drugs. My name is Lucy Abolton. My sister Bobby and Williams, Danny Williams' mother. Bobby and Williams. She was a prostitute and she, you know, hung around on the streets on the Saturday the main. She met him on the streets. I was told that she was with him on 13 occasions. Well, like, you don't know about five or six months after, you know, that he had dated and everything. She said she was My mom went to prison and lost custody of us. My Aunt Lucille stepped up in gang guardianship of us. She raised us in Little Rock, Arkansas. At the time, we was from group home to house to house. My Aunt Lucia wanted to have a father in my life. As a small child, she took me to the governor mansion. There was a car coming at the front gate, right? And the gate swings open. I ran up in there and ran behind the gate, OK? She was trying to get him to accept me and notice me. When I got to the door, I asked her, and the door was slammed in my face. Slam the door in her face. This is Bill's son. He had the black son out here. <laughs> Hillary, she had guys chase him off the property. And I went to and dropped the thing. You know, get the lighter. I read history. Basically, goes back to slave owners. When they have a child with one of their slaves, and the wives try to have him banished off the plantation. What century is this? It just wasn't right. Every child in this state is somebody because we're going to give them every chance we can. And honestly, we were needing child support at the time. My mom was in prison. We was poor, OK? We had nothing. Who going to listen to us, really? My industry was working at a gas station. We had no money to pay lawyers. They just shut us up. My mom told me on a few occasions when she was straightened, she was also pushed out a two-story window where she got a metal plate in her foot. To this day, she still feels scared of speaking. And they were trying to get information about Bobby Williams' school so they can give her, you know, I guess some harsh money. In fact, my mother did receive seven $100 bills a month in the mailbox, even presents on Christmas that was delivered to my home by state troopers. So I felt he was trying to be a part of my life. And then when he became president, everything stopped. In 1995, when my father was president of the United States, the state of Arkansas put us in foster care. I lived in foster homes. It made me feel horrible because I know his child, Chelsea, was well taken care of. And we was house to house, hungry at nights. And to know that my father was the president, it hurts. Try to imagine that your own father refused to love you, refused to say that you exist. Knowing who my father was and that he was so close yet so far away made my pain unbearable. Growing up in Little Rock School District system, it was difficulties because 
you got gang members, drug activities at the schools. And I wanted more to life. I didn't want end up dead in the streets for nothing. Moving from home to home, not having a stable place to go. It came to a point in high school where I had to drop out to take care of my little sisters and brothers and make sure they were stable and able to go to school every day. I got a job full time at a donut shop my 11th grade year to support my sisters and brothers. If I had the love and support of my father that stayed on me, made sure I had the best education, I feel I would have had a better life. In 1999, they tried to sweep me under the rug with Bill Clinton's friend publishing this phony DNA test. It never was a DNA test. Roger Altman. Roger is a longtime friend of mine. Just think about it. It was published in a tabloid owned by a donor of Bill Clinton. Even to this day, Megyn Kelly, Howard Kirk, they continue to quote this bogus DNA test, and it really hurts. I would love to see the DNA test done. Several times, I tried to reach out to the Clintons. People say all the time, you're gonna get yourself killed dealing with the Clintons. I wrote letters to his library. I wrote letters to addresses I got off the internet. Even emailed them from Facebook and on his Facebook pages. I never got any response back. Once in Little Rock, Arkansas, I visited the Clinton Library. I wanted to see how it felt to be in his presence, and he was speaking. But by the time we made it there, it was, he was already gone. We took a tour through the library. And just to see all the things he'd done in the world, helping other kids in Haiti and, you know, all the other places, it, it just saddened me because I never received any help from him. Hillary started running for president. She visited Little Rock at one of her campaign stops. I put myself right in front of the podium where she spoke. She was looking right at me, eye contact. In my heart, I was thinking she knew who I was. I met with a small group of the Black Lives Matter activists. It made me wonder if she sees Black Lives Matter, why I don't matter to her. And I just felt for them. I was going to introduce myself as Danny Williams, her husband's son, and her stepson. You know, I am a new grandmother, in case you haven't heard. I had millions of questions to ask, you know, why? We're gonna do everything we can to make sure she has every opportunity. Soon as she spoke, she got out of there. I didn't get to talk to my stepmom. I could never imagine having a child and not acknowledge him. I know how it feels to not have a parent in your life. I work construction. I am a person of faith. I take my kids to church every Sunday. I teach my sons how to keep bad language out your mouth, how to speak properly with yes sir and yes ma'am. Recently, I've been telling my kids that their grandfather was the president of the United States. And they're amazed by it. They're like, no, you know, is it for real? And I tell them, yes, you know, that is my father. And I'm going to make sure you get to meet him one day. Hillary, please do not deny I exist. I am your stepson. Chelsea is my sister. And Bill is my father. Super predators. We have to bring them to heal. I feel bad when Hillary called black people super predators and that we need to be brought to heal. I'm black, I'm real, I am her stepson, and I deserve the love that she has given Chelsea. We hear my stepmother tells the nation every day we're stronger together. They know who I am, and I know who I am. I have to meet my father. I have to know that he's willing to, to even accept me. I has to know that he, I mean, I don't know. Like any child, I want to know my dad and I want him to know me. I'm his only son in the world and he's my only dad. We have to come together. We have to. If black lives truly matter to you, please contact me.